Hi, it's unboxing time. Very excited about this one. I've always wanted a real professional microscope for the uh, lab here. I know I've already got like the Mantis uh, microscope and the uh, Tagano microscope. Awesome microscopes for like, you know, soldering and general inspection and things like that. But I don't really, never really had a top quality microscope for really high power magnification and stuff like a couple of hundred times for viewing wafers and real other things in real intricate detail especially one that i can actually shoot video through i've got a couple of those you know cheap ass uh us B ones, but uh, they're just they're just garbage, right? So I've been looking for one for uh, quite some time. They're quite difficult to get here in Australia. Probably dime a dozen in the US, but finding someone who can actually ship one, willing to ship one here to Australia, eh, is a bit harder. I know there's brand new ones, like a lot of people rave about the AM scope ones, uh, for example, and they're probably okay, but they don't. They're never going to be nearly as good as a proper brand microscope. So this is an Olympic. Uh, BH um, series. I, this is the BHM. It's the trinocular one, so I can put a video camera on top. It's you know regular stereoscopic one. It's got uh, planar optics and all sorts of stuff. So hopefully it's okay. I'm a little bit concerned because well this was sent via the eBay Global Shipping Program, and this is the first time I've used this. Um, I asked on Twitter, <laughs> a few uh, people went, oh god, no, that's the kiss of death for sending stuff. And they apparently repacked them, which is what I'm really concerned about. Fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Anyway, let's open this puppy up, shall we? And there's the kiss of death sticker, apparently. Um, that's the company they use, Pitney Bowes. And um, eBay automatically adds on like uh, import charges and everything that are charged separately to this company. Um, so you pay the regular, you know, you pay the seller and then automatically they'll take out another charge for like import charges and shipping and all that sort of stuff for this thing. And now I'm a tad concerned because look, it's already ripped here. It looks, we've, or, uh, it looks like it's just packed with these whether or not they repacked it like that but it's when i picked it up it's all very loose check it out i mean there's you know like <laughs> that is not not the least bit solid so i am somewhat uh somewhat concerned oh look i'll show you this hang on this does not cut it at all look here's the bloody look look it's just sitting there are you shitting me like it didn't even have enough foam pellets on top this is absolutely ridiculous unbelievably bad packaging for a bloody microscope uh repacked it um this mob but geez i'm look at that i mean there's the there's the stereo optics right there just like totally exposed oh i've gone surprised the whole head hasn't snapped off the way they uh you know treat stuff you see those horror videos of you know airport uh you know the way they uh get things on and off the plane and stuff like that oh gee, look just a piss ant little bit of bubble wrap yeah my uh lamp at the back is cracked unbelievable what a complete load of garbage so here's the cracked light end on it you can see i'm i'm surprised the whole thing just the this whole part just didn't snap right off i mean seriously um i am not sure if uh that's supposed to have something that's for like the filters i believe uh to go in so i'm not sure what's going on there i'm stunned that, that survived at all i'm not sure if it's supposed to be that loose but anyway that's just for the light going in so that's not too bad um the bulb inside is not shattered by the looks of it but i haven't tried it yet now, if you're buying these sort of metallurgical microscopes, it's important about the objective lenses here. And it's important to get plan objectives. What plan means is that uh, it is basically uh, adds no distortion over the entire field of view. And you might think that's, well, obvious, okay? But at high magnifications, um, you know, it's, it's quite an art to make optics um, over the entire field of view that don't distort anything and that's what these plan objectives do so i got a times 40 uh that's what the 40 on the end is um these are the original olympus ones uh 20 and then i've just got a regular uh times 10 which is not a uh, plan uh objective then i've got two smaller ones uh 2.5 times and the other is 
Oh, it doesn't say. Anyway, it's it's bound to be, uh, yeah, bugger all. So really small magnifications. What I'm really after is the uh, times uh, 40 and the times 20. And then you multiply those objectives to get your final magnification by your uh, eyepieces here. These are uh, WF10s. WF stands for uh, wide field. You want the wide field ones. If possible, they give a better, a larger field of view. These are uh, times 10. You can get, uh, you know, times 15 and times 20 and 25 and all that. So if I've got uh, times 40 objective uh, down there and a times 10 uh, up here on the eyepiece then a total magnification of uh, 400 times this is a, a nice little uh, sliding uh, pupil um, adjustment thing so that's really quite nice the lenses are very dirty this is like straight out of the box so they look relatively clean on the inside which is the main part so I can I mean this whole thing is quite uh, quite dusty and a bit how you're doing so it really needs a good clean up so here's the complete uh, microscope luckily it is one big die cast metal piece these olympus ones were built to last built to be serviced you know really uh top quality microscopes and you'll notice it does have the uh, trinocular uh, camera port on the top and it does come with um these um, adapters. Now I need to uh, uh, convert into a uh, Sony E-mount for both my um, camera here. This is a Sony E-mount uh, lens. So hopefully, you know, I could like mount that uh, directly on top or I've got a point um, seven times um, various adapters. So that plugs into the uh, tube on the top. Not sure what this puppy does. It's some sort of uh, you know, to clamp it at some sort of distance. And uh, anyway, I need to convert that. That's adjustable as well. I need to convert that into a uh, Sony E-mount, but I should be able to buy an adapter for that. That's the plan. Now, one interesting thing that's been uh, custom fitted to this thing is this Mitotoyo uh, micrometer here for the uh, Z-axis here. So, you know, you can see that then you can actually measure the vertical distance. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be to me, but you can see how much it uh, changes by. Now, one of the good things about this uh, BH series, it is a metallurgical uh, microscope. It is designed, um, in fact, they show like the front page of the brochure for uh, wafer inspection and uh, things like that, although it's, you know, it can do a ton of different uses. It's got a reasonably large flat uh, state. This is called the stage uh, part of it. And the adjustment is a bit, I thought it'd be finer than that on the X and the Y. So it's got individual X and Y adjustments, but that's a bit, that jiggles a bit. It's a bit loosey-goosey, so I'm not, not that impressed by that. Although the, uh, the Z axis, um, the little micro adjustment there, but the Z axis and the X, Y stage, it's, you know, it, it's still going to be better than like an AM scope or something like that. But of course, you can just, you know, move this around until you just, you know, you get it near enough to where you want and then you really get your focus. You really want fine adjustment on your Z here, which adjusts your uh, focus. So that's really important and it's got that. But the thing with this uh, BH series, it you can get like a whole bunch of add-ons for it to make it do almost anything. And I don't know what half the uh, stuff on here does. I've, I guess I've got a uh, learning curve. It can do, you know, bright field and dark field um, optics and, you know, all sorts of whiz-bang stuff. But, but a proper professional brand microscope like this Olympus one, it's going to be streets ahead in terms of optical quality and alignment and all sorts of stuff over uh, your AM scope one you buy on eBay from China or you know India sell a lot of them these days and things like that this one is going to beat the pants off it assuming it still works hopefully and I got this original uh, transformer for it. it runs on 110 volts and you can see the it's got a little bar graph there that's rather neat um, and yeah it's like a nominal six volt uh, bulb so this just adjusts the uh, just adjust the bulb in the back of this thing, but it's not coming on at all. So I don't know whether the bulb's blowing, broken, or bloody whatever. Yeah, the bulb is uh, blowing. I tested the uh, transformer and it's fine. And of course, the, all the surrounding part around here, all the support mount, it just, uh, yeah, it just shattered in transit. Damn it. Somehow I don't think I'm going to be able to get one of those at the local uh, hardware store. No, sorry, Bob. And that seems to have gone on quite nicely. Yep, spacer fills in the gap for the 
the cable ties. Yep. And now we're going to turn it on. Is it going to be focused? Woo -hoo! Hell yeah, oh, there we is. go. There we go. Heck yeah, it is. That's a relatively even light. Now, if we adjust it, pull it back. Okay, it's, so it's so actually... Bring it back and... Oh, look. It, it, it sort of creates like a dead spot if you rotate it. Ooh. Yeah, look, look. I, I'm sure it... Could be further out. I have to, yeah. might have to go further out for it. Yeah. This is where, you know, the light source is not just trivial. You oh, can't no, it's, just it's, it's shine good. a torch in there. It was just because I had the... I, when I right. push it out far enough, the whole thing falls at an angle. Right. Which means the, the angle it's being projected. Oh, okay. Is yep. Okay, so Check we have it some out. calibration dots. We do have some, I think they're calibration dots. Uh, it looks like calibration data. Let's zoom and in. It's nice colour, isn't it? There's some nice yeah. colour in there. No, no, it doesn't quite stay in focus when you swap lenses. So what, what lens are we on at the moment? 40 now. 400 times. And that's the other thing. The, uh, we've actually, we're actually using digital zoom on the camera at the moment because if you just use the adapter up here like that, then uh, you actually get the circle. You actually get the, uh, the full-on circle like that, which is not great. So uh, we do have to uh, digitally zoom into that puppy, I'm afraid. Look at the depth. So yeah. this is... You can tell that this isn't a thickness of zero. It's not completely flat because you yep. can change focus between. The you can two. change focus between the different points. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a physical, and now you can actually see the hot spot of the light there. When you, uh, what's that? We are only using like the times, ten uh, ob objective lens or something. Yeah. So you can see that because uh, we've got no no diffuser in there at the moment, actually diffusing that light. So it's quite hot spotty. All right, now I've actually got this uh, the HDMI output of my Sony uh, Next VG30 camera hooked up to my capture uh, card. And sorry about this, if I touch this bench at all, if I, if I even try and use my mouse, you can see it just bounce the image bounces around like that. Anyway, this is actually what we see with full zoom out. So obviously, um, you know, that's not great. We would have to get another sort of uh, lens in there if we wanted to get the full resolution. But what I'm doing now is I'm actually zooming in with the digital zoom on my Sony camera. So I'm not getting the full resolution out of this thing. So anyway, it's good enough for today's purposes. But check this out. Now what we've got is we've got a 0.7 uh, lens on the uh, which converts the triaxial port uh, camera port to the Sony Next VG30, but it just so happens with the sensor I'm using on the Next VG sensor and everything else, it gives the same field of view as the uh, same field of view as the times 10 wide field lenses. On the microscope if you actually look through it so I've got a 40 times objective lens and with the we've checked it's the same through the port so we're basically uh, getting uh, what we're seeing here is uh, 400 times magnification on a wafer so um, you can actually see and if I adjust the focus you can see the depth of field there is very touchy on this thing very very touchy but you can see the array down here. Now I'm, if I move the stage of the microscope, the stage isn't good enough. Look, this is some sort of memory area, obviously. If, oy, there we go. Something of more interest. AT&T. It's upside down. All the electrons are going to fall out, but that's... Is it an AT&T die? I don't know. I just um, randomly chose this from... Uh, I had a box of wafers, so... Um, I don't know. Look, you see these in the center of the screen there. Really interesting um, uh, jump overs there that jump over these larger uh, power traces, for want of a better word. And I'm no uh, dye silicon expert, so I won't pretend to know what uh, actual elements I'm looking at on the die here. But you can see that it works quite well, and the light actually works pretty good as well. Now this wafer, um, David had to actually clean this wafer. It was caked in dust and stuff, so he actually cleaned it with uh, um, Windex. <laughs> yep, he's a big uh, fan. He's a big Windex fanboy. So, you know, like, it's not important. So, look, we can see stuff on there. I don't know whether or not that's uh, still dirt or whatever, or whether or not that's, uh, you know, uh, we saw some scratches before and things like that. So, uh, here's some of the 
features. Now I'll whack in the times, let me rotate it to the times 20 lens and it's slightly out of focus a little bit so we can bring that back into focus. There we go. And we can move along these elements along here. These are, uh, they are actually uh, obviously the bond, some bonding points and this is uh, interesting. Are these like a red, you know, a calibration um, type elements or something like that? It works really well. Our, our diffuser seems to be working quite well. Anyway, the color's great. Look at this. It's just fantastic. I love it. So this is this. So this light. Basically, what we're doing is so we cleaned up the microscope, and uh, it works a treat. Even though it was absolutely abused in uh, postage, and. Uh, We've replaced the light source. By the way, we're, we're running about 0 0.8 watts on that uh, LED. I think it's a Cree XPE or something like that, um, like an older one, um, with like a one watt capable uh, LED. And we're running that at, uh, at 0 0.8 watts. So we don't need a huge amount of light. I mean, the original bulb in this was like a 15 watt job or something like that. But that's anyway... This is a really, really nice way for inspection microscope now. I mean, we can obviously get improvements with this. We can, you know, tweak the light source, but I reckon that light is pretty darn impressive. What do you think? If anyone's like a really an expert, I know there are on the EEV blog forum. They have helped me out in the past, so thank you. Um, I do forget names, but I know there are some really good uh, way for microscoping um, experts on the, uh, on the forum. And uh, they have helped out. Look at that structure there. That's look, look at that. That's a three D element. Something sticking out there. Wow. The depth of field on this thing is absolutely amazing. And uh, let us know if this is accurate or not, because it looks pretty darn good to me. Anyway, I'm very happy with this. Um, so more videos. In the future, I think, if I ever need to uh, do some wafer inspection, this one's a winner. It'd be nice, actually. I might um, get one of those um, AM scopes, which are very popular, those eBay ones. Everyone's talking about those on the forum and stuff. And um, I might actually get one of those and actually compare it to this uh, Olympus uh, BHM, which is a wafer, pretty much designed for wafer uh, inspection and stuff like that, but it really is quite old. And uh, servicing these things is an art. You actually get, you know, people in to service these. You generally wouldn't try and do them yourself unless you knew what you're doing. But look at that pad there. It looks like uh, that's had a uh, wafer probe on that, does it? On that pad in the center? Anyway, that's really cool. It's worked really well, and I'm pretty happy with those results. So um, hopefully, we can do some more videos on this in the future. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and as always, uh, discuss on the EEV blog forum or in the comments down below. Hope you liked it. Catch you next time.